Hello everyone, and welcome to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation's Disruptive Innovation Festival 2019. The festival is an online interactive event series that aims to shift mindsets and inspire action towards a circular economy. My name is Rob, and I'm delighted to be joined by Diana Barano and Augustin Cadiz from Rentivo Chile. Rentivo Chile is a circular economy platform that aims to reduce waste through introducing new methods of product reuse. I'll invite Diana and Augustin to kick things off shortly but first, please remember that this is an interactive event and so post any comments and questions that you may have in the comment box to the right of your stream or alternatively post it on Twitter using the hashtag ThinkDiff. Thank you very much for joining us today, Diane and Augustine. Could you kick us off with a introduction to yourselves and perhaps the main problems that the rental and subscription based models could overcome? Hi, Robert, and thank you everybody for joining us in this session. As you say, we are here in Chile and proudly represent Latin America and also Rentivo, conformed by Agustin Cari, Sebastian Guerrero in Ecuador, Jose Barreiros in US, and myself, also Diana Barreno. Um, and just to talk about, about background that you say, well, I was, uh, my background is in business engineering, also in innovation management. I have had the chance to work closely with the startups in Germany as an investor relation manager, and that also lead to also start a business in the circular economy uh, that represented also in Europe and in China as well. Well, hi, I'm Augustine. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I have a bachelor in business engineering. I worked for several years in investment banking. And in between, I made my own business of exporting mushrooms to Europe and North America. But it was something missing. So that was the circular economy. So I studied a little online in Germany. And then we managed to create a, this startup, Rentivo. Awesome. So if we talk about the main problems, I think it isn't big news. We have so many right now. Um, but if we just track all those that can be solved by implementing these kind of models, we have mainly three. And the first one, if I, if I may say, it's the plan of solvescence. When we talk about plan of solvescence, it's very important that some authors even said that it's a conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. but the stats and, and, and the truth is out there. And we have right now products that either they cannot be repaired as easily as before, they, are, break, they break very easily, the software cannot be upgraded because it's not available anymore or simply is not desired anymore, meaning that there is a new uh, product uh, coming up next year, so people throw out the previous one and just buy the new one. But what happened with those products that we throw out, right? That's, that's a problem as well. And then we are facing the, this waste management crisis because after we throw it away, it's not only the problem, it's just not anymore a problem, it's the problem of the city halls. And that's also a main issue because they currently don't have enough infrastructure, especially in emerging markets. And in case of Latin America, for instance, by 2050, 90% will be living in the urban areas. That means that they have to also handle even much more in terms of waste management. And if we just take the logical way to solve this, let's say we'll have to produce a better components for the product so they can last longer. Well, the thing is we don't have enough resources and in the future will be even less. So that's also the third problem because as we lack of resources in the future and even right now in some, in some, in some terms, we have to say that we have to find another way to solve that issue that it just not only come from the material part, but also for the behavior part. So then when it comes to this type of models as is the rental of subscription, but we have to understand better in which system are we right now. And so for that, I, I leave to Augustine to explain much more. Yeah, exactly. Actually, the linear economy is almost depleted. Um, there is many aspects that contribute to the fact that our linear way of production must change. Um, considering, considering the population grow and the growing level of consumption, which has led to the scarcity of natural resources and many other bad side effects. This has resulted in intense competition among companies. There are mm -hmm. hundreds of companies that are doing the same item, the same service. So uh, they are linked to careless way of production since they focus lies rather on staying profitable and create a responsible way of consumption. In conclusion, the dimension of our consumption must change and so must our economy. A linear economy depends of cheap materials, energy, credit, 
but these cheap conditions doesn't exist anymore. There will be 3 billion new customers entering the market yeah. next 20 sure. to 30 years, which will put an enormous pressure on our resources if we continue with this current way, the linear way. So if we want to achieve a good quality of life for the future, we must understand that our natural resources are not enough to meet our current and still growing consumption. Therefore, we must find a way to redesign our products at the same time, use all the things our tour of our daily life more efficient. So uh, that was is the big problem, but now we have a solution. So it's the circular economy. So it's the most powerful concept. So what is the circular economy? Um, and the most powerful thing uh, that are in the living world, one species waste is another one's food. And all the energy is provided by the sun, which is infinite and a clean source of energy. So this is the inspiration of the circular economy. So the circular economy cycles valuable materials and products and produce and transport them using this renewable energy. There is four pillars for this. So first, waste equal food. We need to build resilience through diversity. Mm -hmm. We use the energy from relevant resources and very important, think in systems. Considering all the consequences of the production process, like a closed system, we, we cannot make and then forget about it. So based on these principles, we can change the production and consumption values from a take, make and waste to reduce, reuse and recycle. And this is the approach that we, the rental subscription model in Rentivo, we're trying to develop. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks for that. Is there anything else you want to add on to the circular economy concept? Or is it, is it, you think you pretty much hit it? Yeah. Uh, there's some, so many uh, inputs out there that you can always yeah. find out, but I think this is a very nice way to simplify it, to understand and just see what is out there, the nature. Absolutely. That's, that's the main one, right? So we can see how beautiful it works um, and that's what we have to replicate. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks very much for that. I asked you a question for problems. You gave me the problems and then a solution as well. So mm -hmm. no complaints. Um, further to that, though, linking it towards this session, um, can you give the audience uh, an overview of the difference between leasing and um, renting models, please? Right. So when we're talking about now on, on the main topic of this session, right, so we're talking about renting, but sometimes there's misunderstanding about renting and leasing. Mm. And although there's many similarities, we have to say. There has some difference, but mainly in the contractual terms. While we have, for instance, the licensing um, contracts where it has a fixed period of time, they have a fixed fee, and we have the mainly case that we all are kind of aware that is the washing machines, for instance, in some countries are more uh, often used than others, but you have the manufacturers would lease this to, to either the building or just the users, and they have a fixed period of time where they pay for that. And at the end, the manufacturer can even offer um, to, to the user to purchase it either by a um, reasonable amount. While in the renting model is a little bit different and it has much more space to vary, right? So when here we have, for instance, the case that you can have a fee according to the time. So for instance, could be a daily fee, a weekly fee, a monthly fee, and they don't have the option to buy it back, let's say, or, or mm. just to buy it, right? So that the thing is to make the mouse of the item and it has a different terms. But both models, and here is one of the most, I think, important takeaways as well, is to understand there are performance-based models. That means that they are not just based on just simply sell it and just don't care about what happened afterwards, but it has to be that it lasts longer because it's not just the product, it's also the service that it comes. And that's why we also has been used the term of product as a service. So for instance, we also have to say here, if we just take one step further to the topic, which is just the rental model, um, and understand one statement that I always like to say about the rental model. We have to see it in this way. Every time that we have unused value is equal to waste value. So for instance, right now you have just to watch around if you are at home or at work and you have to see that there are so many things that are not being used 
and that is equal to waste value. So if we start changing our perspective and rethink about so many things that we have that we are not using right now, that means that it's a waste value, right? And if we take just the online uh, rental market right now, it's very attractive, not just for investors, but also for what is coming up for companies and private companies. So we have around 19 billion market value in just the rental, um, in the rental, online rental market, and it's expected to grow up to 60 billion market. So that means that we are having a growth rate around from 7% yearly. So that's a very interesting fact that we have to consider when we talk also for entrepreneurs, for instance, they want to go into this field and understand much better how is the, how is the growth rate going, right? And of course, when we talk about the online um, rental market, we also have different types. And I think this is a very interesting part because we mm. can hear about this or perhaps have seen in, in your cities some models about renting and we have three types mainly. We have the decentralized one that is basically a peer-to-peer. Right? So for instance, one person has an unused uh, furniture out there and they want to put it in a rent for a period of time for another person that just come to the city and of course they don't want to buy it because they will stay for a short period of time. And the platform that is in between that is the matchmaking, that's a decentralized way. In our case, for instance, in Rentivo, we have a centralized platform where we take the ownership of the items and therefore we have the security and the ability of those. Right? So we have a chance to either have the ability, have the warranty for the products and even much more futures. We also have a hybrid, um, let's say platform where it's a mix of those two. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the end, we just have to say that both, I mean, this uh, rental model, the main object is to diminish the, the use of plastic textiles and of course reduce the footprint. So if we just say, just to conclude this part of this rental model, and a very important way, which is the challenge. I mean, it sounds very nice, mm -hmm. uh, but of course it has some challenges, right? And what are those? So mainly they have two challenges. The first one is that we have to shape the consumer behavior into a user behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's a current, uh, a current challenge, but I'm pretty sure and confident that in the future will be much easier. Just in US, there will be by 2021, almost 85 million people willing to use that. Currently, it's around perhaps a 20% less. So it's every time going much more and, and spreading the news, right? So we have um, also to the second main challenge, let's say, which is the design, the eco design. So meaning that the fully circular economy, as we know, it has a full circle where it has to come back to the manufacturer. With Rentivo, for instance, we try to do that. Like we take, for instance, an item that can be used many times and afterwards, the idea is to give it back to the uh, manufacturer so they can dissemble and they can make a new one based on that. So we have the zero waste and that's the main goal. So I think that has that can be possible if Eco Designs is put in place for, for the manufacturers for, uh, for sure, but also for the whole platform as well. So that, that said, that's basically what is a rental model, but also an evolution and a very complement part mm. of that is a subscription model. And that's what I think you will complement as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the subscription models, we, we think is like the evolution, like you said, and it's important to define this. So it's an arrangement that facilitates either regular delivery or long-term use of a service or product. So what are, the, um, what are the reasons that we think this market, these users are ready? Right now, the subscription to tangible goods, we're not talking about utilities or mm -hmm. taxes, no, just tangible goods account for about 80 billion euros, all in Europe. So then the younger groups between 18 to 35 years are much more willing to subscribe to the access of tangible goods. No, now we have a lot of examples of service. And then the good things is there are no risk of maintenance or repair costs because you just rent it and you forget about it. Mm -hmm. You always end up to have update products. And the good thing, what we're trying to do is you access to high quality products without paying the high purchase price, without paying the full price. Right. So, so just a fraction of that. So that is, very important for the for the users to to be interested in this. 
Awesome. Thanks for that. That's, uh, that's very clear, very, very incredible. Um, one thing that I did think, could you essentially say that these models are an are a, uh, attempt to um, give value to underutilized assets that people have? Is, is like, you can, yeah, you say more life cycles, more value. Yeah, I like it. It's very cool. Um, and then, so on to the next question is after doing some research on, on Rentivo, I have to ask you, why did you choose the baby gear industry? Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, uh, when you analyze a lot, it's like kind of uh, very clear. It's because in the first five years of life, the kids grow so fast that you need to change the, the equipment, the items regularly. And the old equipment lies around without any purpose. It's a loss of value, you no? Know? Right. So this generates a huge difference between the time that the child used the item and the lifespan of the item. So we are trying to correct this. So another powerful reason is that before the, 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 the group that I mentioned before, the young group between 18 and 35 or are the young parents who are open to the rental subscription based models. Maybe if we did this like 20 years ago, mm -hmm. it will be much, much, uh, has been much uh, difficult. So also what happened is that the kids like or dislike an item very fast. And sometimes their interest in only for a limited time span. So we, we can also correct that. And finally, we believe that we contribute, and this is the most important thing, to generating the more awareness for the kids and parents to be users instead of consumers. So they know that they need to take care of the item because then another child or parent will reuse this in the future. So you need to be responsible of your behavior. And that is very, very important, but also a little uh, difficult. Yeah. yeah, and adding on, on what Agustin already said, I think it's a very powerful statement to say that we are impacting directly to the new mm. generation behavior. Coming back to the very beginning, when we say about the problem, yes, we can do something right now, but we always have to think and do something beyond that, right? So thinking about how we can impact the behavior, baby girl give us that chance. So baby girl give us the chance to not only give our solution for parents right now that they can afford a premium, uh, a premium product, but also to the babies and the kids because they can understand that they have to take care of mm. the things because it will leave uh, maybe soon in two weeks and they have a much more variety. Mm. That's one of the things that is a very powerful statement, as I said, because it really impacts also what they are looking after. So they will grow up and they will know that they have to live in a world of sharing. And mm. um, that's perhaps something that we didn't have when we were children, yeah. right? But we do have to know to in encourage that and create that awareness. And as soon as we create that and as early we can get in that, it's even better. So that's why. And I think we have mentioned Rentivo so many times, um, that, which is time now to say about a wine liner while we do. Um, so Rentivo is a refined platform to give the access to those parents that are looking for high quality products for their babies and for their kids. They just have to rent it. They have to pick up the dates that they wanted to be delivered and they want to, that we can pick them up. And of course they don't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. There is no rush here. We identify that parents have no time. So therefore we deliver at the doors and we pick it up as well in the same place. And of course, there is a very important pain point here that is the lack of space. Mm. So if we talk about that, it's not only about the resources that we will not have in the future, but it's also the space. Right now, we will not even have a space for ourselves, but in the future, having a storage room will be a, a luxury point uh, at home, right? So why we do have to give it so much importance in something that is not being used? And that's the takeaway. So for that reason, also Rentivo gives them the chance that they have just to use it for the period that they need it. Of course, we can also recommend them to just give a subscription for the time that they need it and afterwards they just upgrade to the new one. So that's what we do at Rentivo. And we, we are very happy to have the support of Chile here mm. because it ha we have started and there is not only the user who has been helping us uh, to support that um, startup, but also the companies. And we have the from the very beginning, the support 
of a Startup Chile, which is uh, one of the top notch uh, incubator programs here in the region. Mm -hmm. And they have helped us, as I said, from the very beginning, constantly to look forward of growing up and scale. And also we have um, the support of the Minister of Environment as well. They have a whole department of circular economy, which mm -hmm. is very important to highlight. And on top of that also, we have companies because as an ecosystem, it's a very important part of connections and synergies. So when we talk, for instance, with the biggest airline of Latin America, which is LATAM, uh, and we have already connected with them to be in their loyalty program, which is, again, one of the largest in the world. So having that connection and having that powerful, um, let's say, support, it gave us a chance to also cooperate with other corporates. And now also they want to have the benefits for their employees. Mm. And they now are understanding that circular economy is becoming a very important resource for them to implement in their daily base. So they have now the vision, they have to do something different that they are doing right now. So it's very important that the startups that are watching us today, for instance, or that are hearing this, so they understand that they also have to connect with corporates. It has to be a synergy. Mm. Um, so having said that, we also growing on that perspective as well. We are very eager also to connect with more corporates and people who are in that ecosystem. Um, and of course, we also wanted to make it this a little bit more interactive and tell you much more about the important facts that we have found out in these times. So what about Robert, if we make a quick quiz, um, just to maybe give a little bit to think in, in, in the other side of the screen. Yeah, sounds great. Um, so to the audience members, we're, going, we're about to uh, have an absolute treat and um, see a couple of products from the baby gear industry with Diana and Augustine. Um, they're gonna ask some questions. If you wanna leave your answers in the comment box, please feel free, that'd be incredible. Uh, and if you're watching on the YouTube video, also leave your comments, we'd still love to hear them. Thanks very much yeah. guys, let's see it. <laughs> Super, and we'll just, just kind of reflect at home or at work as well, so don't worry. So we will show you the first item. And as you can see, it's mm -hmm. a baby car seat. And the question is, how long do you think that will last versus of how long they will parents use it. will yeah. use it? Yeah. So if we just take this huge <laughs> item back, um, we can say that this item is being used just for the first six to seven months. It really depends on the height and the weight of the Absolutely. baby. But imagine it's just being used for couple of months. We're not talking about even a year, it's just months. And it lasts 10 years in average. So that means that- So that is less than 10% 10 10 of usage and that is a huge waste of resources, energy and money. No yes. money and space. So we are trying to correct that error, the mistake, no? Definitely, that's the first one. And I guess for parents were kind of easy, but this one might be more tricky. So if you see this, this is for the future Mozart. <laughs> so if you see here, for instance, we have a beautiful piano. And if you might guess with the same question, well, in this case, with just taking into consideration the data we have gathered from Vantivo, in average, is being used for two weeks. Yes, just for two weeks. And that means it's not very long, which we have identified the main reasons are because nowadays the babies, or in this case, the kids, they get bored very easily. They want to have either a new instrument afterwards, so they want to upgrade themselves to a new challenge, or they simply don't like it anymore. Like they say, no, you know, I like more sports, I don't yeah. like another things. Yeah, so that is the thing. We, we are trying to convert consumers to users. We're trying to open this universe of items uh, because you have uh, a, a la long lifespan, uh, but then you have uh, technology changes or the kids get bored. So we're trying to correct that in the early stages of life. Yeah. So we can put in the chip uh, at the beginning. Right. No? And also given the chance, like if they mm. want to try another instrument, why they have to stick with one single sure. instrument because the parents that they don't have even more money or time to buy a new one, mm. right? So if they want it, they just can rent another instrument if they want. A lot of parents said, said to us that like they buy a guitar, then yeah. the kids don't like it and they said, uh, come on, you need to use it anyway. But that is not fair, no? <laughs> sure. it, 
they want to do another thing to go and skate or I don't know. They need to try everything. So that is the thing, the access. Right. We don't want to own the things. We want the access. Uh, that is the key point. Right. And now I think it's very important because we have named a lot of numbers, but this probably the list goes beyond numbers. And we have been very impact about how many stories and how, how in how many ways we can yeah. change lives. So for instance, we have a case in Puerto Varas, one of our clients who was um, renting a, um, a sock for their baby, which is have it here. And it's a special one because in her case, uh, she had to take care of her baby for the first two to three months yeah. because it has a special condition, yeah. which means that they have to be awake practically the whole night. Yeah. So instead of doing that, this type of socks that has included a sensor here that you can monitor are different, like let's say it's, it's costly, but also it's not very available here in Chile, for instance. And do, but having this kind of uh, items, mm. she couldn't sleep even more and therefore to give much more in the daily base. So for her it was a life change to have this because it not mm. only protect her baby, but also she has a better quality of life. Absolutely, actually the, the parents in average just sleep three hours yeah. per day, per day for the first two years. So this time of high tech technology yeah. uh, helped the parents to at least sleep one hour more, two hours because just monitor the oxygen, right. the, the heart rate, heart, heart rate uh, is super high tech, but you use it, like you said, a couple months. Yes. So, and we have many, many more gadgets. Exactly, and mm. that's the thing because now technology and high tech technology, especially, they hope just not to be for, for some people, it has to be for everybody. And that's what we also say as a keyword is access. So having said this, I think that's what we're doing with Rentivo. That's what we also are very um, passionate about this topic yeah. of why, why rental and subscription model will lead this new generation. Mm -hmm. it's starting by the parents right now, but we are pretty sure that our younger users will also lead this uh, in something even better. Great stuff. Thank you very much for that, guys. Uh, some very inspiring stories there. Um, really, really sounds great. Um, I mean, do you guys want to move on to uh, some questions? We've got a few from the audience, if you're keen okay. to give it a shot. Yeah? All right, yes. let's go. So um, first one is from Leslie. Uh, and Leslie asks, what, well, with all the public and private sector support that you guys are currently um, receiving, what is the 10-year uh, vision for Renvita? Rentivo, sorry, Rentivo. Yeah, well, we do have um, so many challenges still to pass on for from the both sides, for the circular economy side and for the startup side, because we are a combination of those two, right? So we have two things to always keep in mind. And I think because we are in a very, uh, let's say, a market where people is still trying to identify if that suits me as a partner or mm. not, we still need to have that let's say, patience to, to those users and understanding even better their needs. So what is in the long term, in terms of years, of course, we wanted to even give much more than just what we're doing right now in terms of, let's say, items or even deep dive on in the behavior of the users, like how we can even make it more suitable for them to, in a daily basis, that they can use it in a rental based model, mm. everything that they need it, yeah. right? So there is many ways, but to say what are we doing in the next 10 years is a little bit too much, I, <laughs> I think, because we have to think step by step. Every yeah. step that we make will lead us to the next step. So we will see and hear what our users need and hear also what the market will tell us about how we can fit. Yeah, and I think in addition also, we, are, we, we want to make more um, alliances with companies, right. especially pro productive companies, factory companies about these items. So maybe we can integrate together in right. a system. So that will be much, much efficient in terms of resources, energy and everything. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you for that answer. That was really, uh, really fair and top answer. <laughs> um, we have another, a great question from Giacomo uh, on the website, which is with rental use model payback periods of project financing most likely to lengthen, uh, how can this kind of business model thrive at a large scale considering that? 
So I, if I understood correctly, I mean, maybe we can. Yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll go again. Um, yeah. With rental use models, payback periods of yeah. project financing mo will mostly lengthen. How can this kind of business model thrive at a large scale considering this? Okay. Well, I think it's a, because it's a combination when you have the, the rental side, like uh, for some days, some weeks, and then you have the subscription side, you make a good mix so you can recover uh, the items mm -hmm. more faster. But anyway, if your item is a very good quality, you, you, it's going to last. So it's going to make financial sense, no? Right. And also we don't need to measure only in, 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 in an economic way. We need to add all the savings we are generating of CO2, of plastic, fabrics, aluminum, alloys, and transport right. from one continent to the other, no? What do yeah. you think? It makes a, a lot of sense. I mean, if it's just, just in considerations, for instance, the stat says, and the, and the study says as well, that we are getting a third of much more profit, meaning that if we just buy it and then just forget about it, yeah. you will not, perhaps, you are still missing a part of, of, uh, of the cake, let's say. So interesting fact too, is that for instance, they just the 40% mm. of what we have now in the retail that are selling, for instance, in the baby jar industry is in the primary market mm. but the next one i mean the, the rest the 60 percent that is floating around is for the second hand market yeah. meaning that the companies are missing that part so yeah. a lot of our the baby jar is trading in the second hand market so yeah. if they will have this line of rental through for instance platform that take care of the operations and logistics then they will even have much more uh, profit as well and they also will be encouraged to try to commercialize much better quality of products as yeah. well, because it makes more, more, much more sense. Absolutely, it's a very powerful incentive uh, to absorb part of that second-hand market and what is better that the same factory give you everything, no? Right. So it makes sense with, with it. Yeah. Great, thank you very much for the answer. I, uh, I'm pretty sure that answered everything that could be asked on that one. Um, we have one more from Charlie, which is, uh, do you see any other examples of implementing circular economy in Latin America in the same industry or in other industries? I guess it's kind of just linking to um, what, how, are you, how do you guys see the development of uh, circular economy in Latin America currently going? Mm. Well, I think uh, at least I can talk about Chile. Uh, We're taking huge steps uh, for one of them is, for example, this was the first country in Latin America to eradicate, to uh, forbid all the plastic bags. Mm -hmm. So there, you don't have plastic bags anymore. And the people in the beginning was a little hesitation, but now there is totally accepted. And there is every industry you see, every business you see, there is a lot of waste. Uh, the waste of the agriculture, the waste of the sea, the waste of the forest, the waste or we define like waste. Yeah. And then you see the cars that are in, in, the, in the street park 97% uh, of the time. So that is really, you can do a lot, a lot of the stuff for industry, from service, for products. Yeah. Um, also adding on, on that, I have to say that the first step in every, in every way, let's say, when we want to join that part, is the um, awareness. So when we talk about this part in Latin America, it's already there. So that means that it's coming up with much more stronger way because we understand, we are aware that we have a gap and we have to also overcome that gap by being even faster than other countries into implement. So for instance, now there are agendas of 2030 in every country and they have mm. even a plan about circular economy. As I said before, for instance, here in Chile, they have the whole department of uh, circular economy and same goes to other countries in Ecuador mm. they are as well mm. working on implement circular economy policies to give much more importance on, on, on this field I also have to say that for even I mean it has to be both ways right it just has mm. to be the government from one side the corporate from other side and of course the, the startups and, and the community as well so I think also community is every day even understanding the mm. need first that they have to 
do certain sweeps, right? So they have to perhaps now recycle a little bit more, separate their, their trash. And there is a small steps, of course, but we are very confident in the future, they will be much more stronger and they will speed up as well. Yeah, and, and final th thought is um, that Latin America is didn't enjoy the first, the second, or the third industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. But now we are entered the fourth one. It's technology, it's the 21st century, and, 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 and Latin America is showing they have bright minds and yes. very powerful ones. So if we, like Diana said, if we all can work together, the government, the companies, Ellen MacArthur, it's a team. It's, if we don't cooperate, we will never uh, achieve a sustainable way of living. Right. So there is a lot of energy, a lot of minds, and I think, I feel like Latin America will enjoy and will be very deep in the 14th Brazil Revolution. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Thanks very much, guys. And then developing on that question, actually, um, is Anna has asked, uh, are there any actors that you see missing in the uh, transition towards a circular economy in Chile currently? Currently, any actors missing? Well, I mean, it's a, of course the difference between, I mean, not maybe missing, like um, there's part of the stakeholders that are not mm. there. I think it's just perhaps the stage where they are are mm. different. So for instance, that now there is a policy about circular economy here in place in Chile, mm. it says a lot that the government is keep it up. Mm. Uh, but perhaps corporates and companies, international companies and tries just trying to understand how they can be involved. So they are in another stage. And community, they are, yes, they are purchasing, they are using maybe some services and they're also trying to be aware. But also maybe startups also, they, they are a little bit, uh, try to understand how they can jump in the mm. circular economy field. How can they produce value? What, what they can do? How can they understand the needs to, in order to create a new startup on this, uh, on this topic? So it's also like a different stages. I think there is not missing one, one part. It just simply there in a different stages. So perhaps in one moment, if we have as greatest startups as in other countries, for instance, working hard, hardly in this topic, we may have might speed up the rest of the parts as well. There it is, perfect. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, that now brings us up to pretty much the end of our session. Uh, it's been a great session. Um, thank you very much for, for being involved. And I hope the viewers uh, have enjoyed this session as much as I have. Um, was really interested in the uh, rental market forecasts. Uh, I, I think it's a, I think it's a good position to be in, and it's a great model to base your business around uh, the rental subscription. Um, I also loved hearing about the development of Rentivo Chile. Uh, yeah, it's going really well. Um, I'd like to thank Diana and Augustine for taking the time out to tell us about the development of Rentivo and all the uh, uh, rental and subscription models. Um, if you still have any thoughts in the audience, any thoughts or any comments that you want to share or any questions you want to ask, or even if you're watching this uh, recording of the session, please still do comment and utilize the comment box uh, as we'd love to hear your feedback, questions and comments still. Um, and of course, there are a lot more sessions and events occurring with the diff this week. Uh, we have tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We have circularity and frugality, three tales, uh, from Tales from Three Continents, uh, which will be on the final day of the diff, but it's, it's gonna be an action-packed day full of good quality content. Um, and just in relating to what Augustin said actually about uh, Latin America and the fourth industrial revolution, um, if you want to catch up on any sessions with, uh, there was a session with Peter on Monday um, about uh, Latin America's prosperity and fourth industrial revolution. Um, but massive thank you again to Diane and Augustine, and uh, remember that if you want to catch up on anything we have going on here, visit thinkdiff.co. Uh, 